ally of Putin. Poland and Finland will also be ours. Vladimir Solovyov, a Russian propagandist and ally of Russian President Vladimir Putin, vowed that two capital cities in member countries of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization will be ours. According to Newsweek, it has been more than two years since Putin launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine on February the 24th, 2022. For months, Ukraine was struggling to fight against Moscow's offensive with a diminished arsenal as US aid stalled in Congress. Last month, President Joe Biden signed a $95 billion foreign aid package, which included roughly $60 billion in military aid for Ukraine after it was approved by US lawmakers. At a joint press conference with Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba in Kyiv, Ukraine, US Secretary of State Antony Blinken was asked if the Biden administration was considering relaxing its ban on Ukraine using US weapons in Russian territory. We have not encouraged or enabled strikes outside of Ukraine, but ultimately Ukraine has to make decisions for itself about how it's going to conduct this war. A war it's conducting in defense of its freedom, of its sovereignty, of its territorial integrity. Blinken said, when we will continue to back Ukraine with the equipment that it needs to succeed, that it needs to win. Solovyov recently argued on his Russian TV show that the Ukrainian capital city of Kiev is Russian territory and so is Poland's Warsaw and Finland's Helsinki. Also, most importantly, Blinken brought weapons, but he said it's not allowed to hit Russian territory. And what territory do you hit, you idiots? It's all Russia, Solovyov said in a clip translated into English that was shared on X by Anton Gerashchenko, former advisor to Ukraine's internal affairs minister. Moreover, what about the filthy language he's using in our Russian Kiev? We'll present him with a rent charge for singing all kinds of nonsense in our Russian city. He then directed his attention to one of the guests on his show, Vasil Vakarov, telling him, don't shake your head. That's something new in our Russian city of Kyiv. Vakarov, a political commentator, replied. Solovyov added, whose is it? Kyiv is the mother of Russian cities. Take the old lady back to her motherland. The Ukro Nazis come here, I think, that in another five minutes. Warsaw and Helsinki will also be ours, Russian. And historically, it's all true. The Institute for the Study of War has estimated that the Russians have advanced no more than 8 kilometers from the border in the northern part of Kharkiv Oblast and intend to establish a buffer zone rather than advance deeper. ISW noted that the pace of Russian offensive operations in the northern part of Kharkiv Oblast has continued to decrease after the Russians initially occupied areas that, as now confirmed by Ukrainian officials, were less defended. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and Ukrainian military officials stated that Ukrainian forces have partially stabilized the situation in the northern part of Kharkiv Oblast, which borders Russia. Nazar Volashin, spokesperson for the Kortitsia Operational Strategic Group, stated that Russian forces are trying to achieve tactical successes near the settlements of Lukyansi and Vovchansk to establish footholds for further advancement, but Ukrainian counterattacks, Shelling and drone strikes were preventing Russian forces from consolidating in these areas. The Kharkiv Oblast administration representatives stated that constant Russian attacks were preventing Ukrainian forces from establishing fortifications within 3 to 5 kilometers from the border with Russia in Kharkiv Oblast. They added that Ukrainian forces have constructed the first and second lines of defense at distances of 12 to 13 kilometers and 20 kilometers from the border, respectively. ISW estimates show that Russian forces have advanced at most 8 kilometers from the border in the northern part of Kharkiv Oblast. The forces operating on Russian territory can easily deliver artillery strikes on Ukrainian defensive positions near the border. However, restrictions on the use of Western-provided weapon systems to strike rear Russian areas across the border make stationary Ukrainian defensive positions near the border vulnerable and possibly defenseless.